I only saw the movie once, but it captured my imagination. I was about eight years old, and I saw Walt Disney's movie, Treasure Island. I was captivated by it all. Pirates, Long John Silver, peg legs, islands, and treasure maps. In that movie, there was a treasure map where X marks the spot. I'm sure you've seen movies where X marks the spot on a map. What does the X typically represent? Buried treasure. When you hear the term buried treasure, what images come to mind? I don't know about you, but for me, I imagine like a large lockbox with gold Gold and more gold, feeling it. Maybe some jewels, maybe some other valuables, but lots of gold. The idea of buried treasure seems to capture lots of people's imagination. People like to think that somewhere out there, hidden, there is some immense treasure just waiting for them. This morning we're going to talk about a treasure. Now it's not buried treasure, but it is a real treasure and it's in this world. Paul tells us that every believer has been given this treasure. But this treasure that has been given to us is not meant to be buried, hidden, or locked away. It's meant to be on display for all the world to see. What is this treasure that Paul speaks of? Let's go to God's Word. We are going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 to discover this great treasure that's been given to every believer. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you this morning thankful to be hearing your Word. Your Word, your wisdom, is worth far more than rubies, far more than gold. It's of immense value. We go to your word today, not to hear what Bob Province has to say, but to hear what your word has to say. God, I pray that you work through me for your glory, that you are heard, that your truth is proclaimed today. God, if there's anybody that hears this message that doesn't know you, may they trust you today and receive this treasure. And may for every believer, may they realize the treasure they have in you. God, unto you be all glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Christ Jesus we pray, amen. This morning we're going to focus just on one verse, but to understand this verse, we've got to back up a little bit to understand its context. So we're going to at least read the two verses before it, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting with verse 5, says, For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of of Jesus Christ. Paul tells the church of Corinth that we do not preach ourselves, we preach Jesus. Who is the we here? If you would look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 1, the we is Paul and Timothy. Paul is saying that his motivation is not to preach Paul, that Timothy's motivation is not to preach Timothy. He's saying that Paul and Timothy have no selfish motivation in sharing the gospel. No, what Paul is saying that Paul and Timothy, they preach Jesus Christ. For it is the light of God who shines in Paul and Timothy's hearts, reflecting the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Which leads us to our main text, verse 7. But we have this treasure 
in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. There is many riches in this one verse. Let's begin to unpack it. It begins again with we. That we have something. Who is the we? I think you could say it's Paul and Timothy, but I also believe that it's the original audience, the church of Corinth. That the believers in Corinth have something. Now, we know that this book, 2 Corinthians, was written to the believers at Corinth, but it's also written for us. Every believer is included in this verse. So, what do we have? Verse 7 again. But we have this treasure. Believers have a treasure. The Greek word for treasure here means to lay aside valuables, to store wealth, a repository for riches. So what is this treasure, believer, that we have? Let's go back to verse 5. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. The treasure that we have is Jesus Christ and the gospel that saves. The treasure that we believers have in Jesus is vast and great. What is this treasure that is Jesus Christ? Many things. I could go on forever. I just want to share a few. Believer, we have in Jesus the gospel that saves. We have in Jesus eternal life. Believer, on this earth, you have in Jesus abundant life. We have in Jesus the fruit of the Spirit. And we have in Jesus God Himself making His home in us. God's Word is clear. Upon belief in Christ Jesus, we receive the Holy Spirit. God Himself makes His home in us. Guiding us, convicting us, empowering us. And this is just some of the treasure that we have in Christ. Where do we have this great treasure? Let's go back to verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels says here, an earthen vessel. Other translations say jars of clay. An earthen vessel is a vessel made from the earth. You take some dirt, mix it with water, shape it, form it, bake it, and harden it to form bowls, pots, lamps. Jars of clay in that day was exceedingly common used every day for home use. Yet these jars of clay were fragile. If you drop a clay pot, it breaks. If you bang the side of a vessel of clay, it cracks. Jars of clay are breakable and fragile. They were also cheap, easily replaceable, and common. Now, is Paul saying that we have this great treasure of Jesus Christ in an actual earthen vessel set on top of a shelf in Paul's home? No. The jar of clay he's referring to here are these human bodies. Basically, every believer is a jar of clay in which a treasure resides. We, too, as humans are dirt mixed with water. We too are breakable. Our bones break. Our skulls can crack. And our hearts can be broken. We also are frail. In these human bodies, we have limitations. We are prone to mistakes. We are prone to failure. 
and we have a bent to the temptation of sin. These human bodies that we have are jars of clay, weak, fragile, breakable, and not containing strength of its own, perishable. Let's go back to verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Believer, we have this mighty treasure in fragile bodies, jars of clay, to show that the power is not from us, not from these jars of clay, but comes from Almighty God. This is the picture for us, believer. We have a treasure in us, God, His power, and His presence. To show a world around us, God, even in these fragile jars of clay. Believer, on our own, we are weak, we are fragile, we are breakable, we are prone to mistakes and failures. But if we let the power of God, believer, abide in these weak bodies, it displays God and His power. I want to share four important truths that we can take away from this one verse. Four D's. Discern, divine, display, depend. Let's begin with discern. Point number one, discern. Discern your human strength. I'll read the first portion of verse 7 again. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels again it's not talking about actual clay pots it's talking about these bodies that we have Paul is saying these bodies are weak fragile frail now when you're young you don't think of your body this way you would prefer to see your body as strong and full of endurance but if we're honest with ourselves These human bodies we've been given are filled with weakness. We can only go so long without food before we become weak and whiny. If you go without water for too long, you die. We cannot do without sleep for long. If we go without sleep for long, we are not alert and we experience fatigue. And these bodies are subject to sickness. Just look how this virus has wreaked havoc among human bodies in our world today. These bodies we have can break. These bodies we have can crack. These bodies grow old, grow weak, and eventually these bodies die. And these bodies we have have physical limitations. I can only run so fast and so far. If you place this body I have under water for too long, I drown. If you take this body and place it on the moon, it'll die instantly. Let's face it. These bodies are jars of clay. Organized dirt suits is all that these human bodies are. Filled with limitations. Make no mistake, that's what these bodies are. No better than jars of clay. Now, if I stop here, you might feel this is a little bit of a downer. You might feel a little bit blue. But now we're getting to the good part. Point number two, divine. Or divine dwells. Or believer, God the divine dwells in you I want to read verse 7 again the first portion but we have this treasure in earthen vessels God is that vessel hidden believer in these jars of clay when one receives Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord the Holy Spirit makes his home inside 
this earthen vessel. The presence of God resides, believer, now in you. This is that great treasure. The power of God is at work in you. Believer, we have such great riches in the Holy Spirit that indwells us today, filled with power and presence of God, giving us spiritual gifts, enabling us to do things we cannot do in these jars of clay on our own. Now you may say, and I'm a believer, I've been a believer a long time, but I'm not seeing God's power work in me. How can the power of God work in me? I can only testify to God's working in me. I know what I am, and I know who He is. I want to give an example. I want to testify. When I was a young man, when I was a child, when I was a teenager, I was shy backwards. I didn't talk much. I was afraid of crowds. And if you told me I had to speak in front of a crowd, I was terrified. Why? By nature, I stutter. When I would stand in front of a crowd, I would stutter, I would stammer, I would uh, 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 and I would huh, huh, huh. I oomed and I awed. My knees would knock, I would panic. The thought of standing in front of a group of people was one of my greatest fears. It brought me terror. But when I was in college, God called me into ministry. He called me to be a pastor. And I knew that in being a pastor, I had to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in front of people, which terrified me. So I told the Lord, I told him, I can't do that. You've seen me. You know I don't have any skills to speak. You know I can't do that, Lord. And do you know what he told me? God told me, I know you cannot, but I can. Bob Provence. If you'll trust me, I'll work in you what you cannot do on your own. Now, you may not know this, you may not see this, but every time I stand to preach the Word of God, I see the power of God at work in me because I know what I am and I know who He is. Believer, we have a treasure in us, and it's the power of God. What should we do with this great treasure? Point number three, display. Display the power of God in our lives. I want to read the, all of verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. God wants His power on display in us. Not so the world can go, there's somebody. It's for the world to look and see God. They see God work in and through us. Some of you have spent vacation time at a place called Hilton Head, South Carolina. For those who've been there, if you look south, there's a small island called the Fusky Island. You cannot drive to this island where there's no bridge to go from the mainland to this island. The only way to get there is by ferry or boat. My wife Julie has an aunt and uncle that lives on that island. And they have a son, Julie's cousin, John Oliver, that we call J.O. J.O. spent his teen years on that island. But there's a problem. There is no high school on the Fusky Island. So how does J.O. become educated? How can he go to school? J.O. had to make his way every day to Hilton Head for school. Now, if you remember, I shared earlier that you couldn't drive there. So how did J.O. get to Hilton Head? By boat. They had a small boat. And J.O., as a young teen, would get in the boat early, early, early in the morning and pilot that small boat to a dock on Hilton Head to go to school. He had to leave oftentimes to get to school on time before 5 o'clock in the morning just to get to school. 
This means that J.O. often had to pilot his boat when the sun had not come up yet. It was still dark. So how did J.O. get from the Fusky Island? How could he see his way to Hilton Head? In this, on Hilton Head, there's a lighthouse that every 25 seconds would shine a light. He would navigate by that lighthouse because his dock was right below the lighthouse. He would watch that light to guide him and help pilot him to the mainland. Believer, you have this treasure in jars of clay. You're not to hide this eternal treasure. You're to put it on display, shining the light of Jesus Christ. As that lighthouse helped lead J.O. to land, to safe harbor, we're to shine the light of Jesus Christ so that people don't come to you, but they come to the Savior Jesus Christ. So, so far we've got three points. Number one, discern your human limitations. Two, know that the divine dwells in you. Three, display God's power through you. And four, depend on God's power daily. I have here a flashlight. It's not the best flashlight in the world, but it's what I had at the house. This flashlight is designed, it's made to shine light. We've got a problem. I've turned it on, but it's not shining. Why is that? It's got no power. However, I have, have here in front of me two batteries. In these batteries, it's filled with energy. It's filled with power. I am going to put these batteries in the flashlight. I'm going to connect the bulb to those batteries. And if you can see, let there be light. We have light. For this flashlight to shine a light, it must be connected to a power source. It must be connected to power. Hear me. For us to display the power of God in our lives, we must be connected to God daily. Connected to our power source. We must stay connected, living in close communion with God so we can display Him in this world. How does that happen? How does that look? Believer, you must depend on Him daily. You must rely on His power, not your own. That is key. You see, the world doesn't need to see you. The world needs to see God in you so that a lost world could be drawn to Jesus Christ. Now, this is a hard thing to describe even to believers. But if you know that you're a jar of clay, that you're fragile, limited, weak, but you know that this great treasure you have in you is power, power the world needs to see, you must depend on Him more and more so a lost world can see and be drawn to the cross of Calvary. To close out our message, four points for the believers here. One, discern your human limitations. Two, know that the divine dwells in you. Three, display God's power in you that a lost world can see Jesus. And four, depend. Rely on God and His power day by day. This truth is a mystery, but it's a truth for every believer. God's power is available to every believer. However, if you've yet to trust in Christ Jesus... God does not yet dwell in you. You do not have this power because His presence does not reside here yet. But He can if you ask Him in. If you asked to receive Jesus, you asked to trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior, He will give you the Holy Spirit and God will make His home inside you.
So my word to you today, trust Jesus today. And for every believer hearing me, you have a great treasure in you. In these frail jars of clay, shine that light. Display God's power so a lost world can see and be drawn to the cross of Calvary. Take care and God bless.